Hello everybody and welcome to another video. In this quick tutorial I'm just going to be showing you how to make this bar right here that can display multiple different values. So if we play real fast you can see that I have my max value set to 10 and I have all the values set to 1 to begin with but we can very easily just scale these up and down like so and it tracks all three values and let's get right into it. First thing you're going to do is create a blank project. This is completely new. I haven't touched yet. And the first thing we're going to want to do is create a canvas. So we're going to go to UI canvas, and then we're going to create an empty object and drag that under our canvas. Now I'm just renaming this bar because this will be the, the parent object of our bar. The only thing we're going to do to this is we're going to replace the transform with a rack transform just like this and as you can see it's now replaced the transform with a rack transform. So the next thing we're going to do is create the background for our bar and we're going to do that with UI image and we drag this under the bar and just like this we have our background. I'm just going to make this a gray color, just because that usually makes sense for a background. Now as you can see, when I change the width, it's going to extend in both directions. And that's not what we want. When we have our values, we want them to extend in a single direction. So to do that, we're going to click on this box right here. We're going to hold shift, and we're going to click on this left box right here. Now you can see when we grow the width, it only grows in a single direction. And since it's the background, I'm just going to have this have a width of 700. And if I move this to a position of negative 300, that should center it perfectly. And I'll rename this background. Now our next step, this is where the customization of it comes in. We're going to create all our different values. So as I said in this tutorial, I'm going to be making three, and I'll name these value one, value two, and value three. But if you want more or less, you can do that yourself. Next thing you're going to want to do is just give them any color just by going to the image and changing it. I'm just going to do a simple red, blue, and yellow because they're pretty far from each other. Now. The next thing we're going to have to talk about is the layering of objects when it comes to the canvas. Anyone that uses Unity knows that this object is going to be in front of value 2, value 1, and the background. And if you can see, if I move this, there's the background behind. And if I move this, they're all here, they're just behind. So because of this, we're going to want our values in reverse order. And now you can see our red's in front, blue's behind that, and then yellow is in the very back. And with that, our UI is set up and we can get right into the coding. To do that, we're just going to come down here to our assets and we're going to create a brand new C -sharp script and call this bar controller. Now let's open that up. Now that we got that open up, we can delete these comments here. And this is how I, this is just how I like to format my scripts. This isn't at all mandatory. So the first variable we're going to need is our maximum value. So we're going to create a public float and call this max value. Next thing we're going to have to make is all of our different values that we want. So the way we're going to do this is with a public float array called values. And then obviously for each value, we need a bar to go with it. So we're going to create a public rec transform array called value bars. And since rec transform is a UI element, we're going to have to come up to the top here and do using unity engine.ui. These next variables, you might not understand why we need them, but it'll be explained later. We're going to need a public float called length of background. 
and then a private float called length per value, like so. And if you don't understand why we need these, that's fine. It will be explained shortly. So in our star function, we are going to define the length per value variable. So we're going to say length per value is going to equal the length of our background divided by our max value. And what this is going to do is going to create the increments that need to be done for our values here. Let's get it import real fast. So for example, our width is 700 and our max value is going to be 10. So that means if we want 70 to equal one, it's going to be one times our length per value and 700 divided by 10 would be 70. So this would equal 70, then 140, then 121, and that's how it's going to calculate how long the bar should be. So the next thing we need to do is inside the update function, we need to set the width of the bars so that they correspond with the values in this array. So the first one is going to be value bars.0. This will be our red one. And we are going to do dot size delta, which is how you access the length and width. And since there's two variables, it's going to be a new vector two. And the width of it is going to be equal to the value in the zero index of values times our length per value which if you which I just explained before why this is as it is and then for the height you could just write 100 but if you want to be a bit more like what if you wanted to change this and it wasn't 100 you can also make this value bar 0 dot size delta dot y that's just a bit more intuitive and that's all we need to do for our um, first value our second value is going to be a bit more complicated because if we have our first value if it has a value of 1 which would be 70 and our second one has a value of 2, we make it 140. Well, it only looks like 1 and 1. So what we need to do is we need to add the width of the first value to this width to make it 121, and it'll look correct. So all that's going to look like is value bar 0, or sorry, value bar 1 dot size delta is going to equal a new vector 2. It's going to be the same thing as above values one times length per value, but this time we're going to add value bar zero dot size delta dot x. And then our height is going to be the exact same thing as before value bar dot size delta dot y. Let's go into Unity and see if this is working. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on our bar and we're going to click add component and add our bar controller. For this example, my max value is going to be 10, but you can make this whatever you want. For values, the size of it is going to be three and this value bar size is going to be the same thing. So for each of these transforms, we're just going to drag in the values in value order. So they're in reverse order in the editor, but in the script, we need them in their actual order. So zero is one, one is two, and two will be three. And then the length of our background, that's just whatever length you have as your maximum, which for us is 700. So if we set this to two, and we set this to 3, we should see the values 1 and values 2 change, but value 3 shouldn't because we haven't coded that yet. And there we go, they changed accordingly. 
Now, if we were to code our third value, what we could do is just copy this line and then just paste it again and just change all these values, like change this to two, change this to two, and that would work perfectly fine. But let's say you want to display like five different values and copying that same line of code five times is total overkill. If you're ever repeating the same line of code more than a couple times, there's usually a better way to do it. And in this case, there is. So we can actually change this line of code into a for loop. So let's just move this down. We're going to do for int x equals zero. Oh, sorry. We're going to set x actually equal to one. Since we're figuring out the zero value in this first line, we can start the loop at one. And then while x is less than the length of our values array, we're going to add to x. So that inside of this, we can copy this line of code. So for one, we say x. This we also change to x. And then for our zero, all we need to do is x minus one. Change this to x, and then we can get rid of that line. Either comment it or delete it. And let's go back in. So now if we go to our bar and we set this to, let's say four, and click play, we should see there we go, and we can even edit these values in real time and it'll change the bar perfectly. And let's say you just real quick want to add one more value, you can simply just make this 4, make this 4, add another value, call this value 4, and we'll make it green, and we'll make it equal to 1. Oh, we have to, I rushed it. We got to set the element here, set this to value four. And there it is. The one last thing we're going to do is optional, and that is to just put some art around this to make it look a bit better. I have some art here. You can go down into the description of this video and download it for yourself. So once you have it, you can click on it and we have some settings we're going to have to edit. So it's 32 by 32. So change this to 32 pixels per unit. We don't want a filter and we don't want any compression and click apply. Now, if we go and we duplicate our background, we're going to set the color to white and add the bar border as our image. You can see that it does this stretch and that doesn't look good. So we're going to have to come back to it and go to the sprite editor. Once you have this open, we're going to have to mess with these green lines. And what these are going to do is tell Unity how it should stretch the image. So all we're going to do is take these lines and move them to only show this middle section and also these straight sections. So it will not stretch these corners, which is what we want. So we do this, we hit apply, go back to unity, we just re-drag the bar border source image in, and there we go. It is a little bit smaller than the actual image, so we can just change the width of this to something like 710, or seven, I'll change it to 720, and then we'll just move this over another 10 so that it's centered. And just like that, you have a bar that can display multiple different values. All you have to do is get a reference to the bar script and change the values in this array, and your bar can display any value you want.